Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Tammy, the creator of the blog and this YouTube channel called Nutmeg Notebook. So we're really happy to have you here today. This is where we share all about our whole food, plant-based lifestyle. Sometimes we do interviews and today we're giving a short little lecture followed by a q and A. I'm also here with my husband, Tom. Say hello, Tom. Hello everybody. <laughs> Just doing a quick sound check here. Um, I have a couple of housekeeping um, uh, requests for you, and if you forget, uh, one of our moderators will remind you uh, to help me uh, spot questions in the chat feed. If you'd give me four question marks before, and then a bonus four question marks after, if you got time, that helps those jump out at me, and, and uh, I can spot them and get them to Tammy, uh, or sometimes she'll see them out of the corner of her eye. So um, and I'm then always Tam watching. Yeah, Tammy's going to do. Uh, <laughs> a bit of a presentation um, about focus and mindset that we actually were thinking about this whole focus and and how you think about what you want to do and your self-talk. Uh, kind of, we were both having the same idea and I don't know, I think I had thought it and I was going to bring it up and then you did bring it up and it's like, oh my God. We were thinking the same we were, thing. We were thinking the same thing. So, for the topic for today. So we figured that was going to be the topic today. So she's going to present for a little while. And 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 so if you can hold your questions um, during that, because I'm not going to want to interrupt that presentation because I don't, I don't want to break her train of thought. or, or uh, Well, I'm know. going to bring you in on a few things oh, to okay. give commentary. Well, then it's open <laughs> season on whatever happens. So, and then after the... the formal presentation then we'll uh, be happy to take questions after that so um, if you do have something that's like really pertaining to it put it in there at least we'll come back up to it uh, or if I have a burning desire I may interrupt her but I, I try to avoid that uh, so <laughs> you make it sound like you're gonna there's gonna be consequences well if I know you've you worked <laughs> hard on the presentation and I don't like you know if I'm presenting and somebody interrupts me I completely lose my train yes, of thought that does it's like happen. where was I? I have no yes. clue what I was gonna say next so question marks, uh, uh, hold the questions a little bit later. Restrooms are down the hall on the left. <laughs> if you need to get up, go any time you need to. Um, what about snacks? Um, I, I have a little light juice water here. Oh, and, and you've got your beet, beet juice. So, beet so we're set up on beverages, no snacks today. I don't want to wind up with a junk in my teeth. No, you know. it's terrible like to discover that you've got green, green stuck in your teeth after you've been talking to someone. That's yeah. always so embarrassing. Okay, so I see a lot of familiar names here. And it's, it's good to have you back and, um, and welcome. And I'm going to push the button and send this right back over to you. You can, okay. get, you can get going. Thanks. So we're calling it today, we're calling this um, plant, plant, gosh, I can't even talk, Tom, plant-powered focus. So um, like he said, we both came up, we had like a similar idea on what we wanted to do for a subject today. I guess we were both were just on the same wavelength, which is really fun. And I'm fascinated with how the mind works. I just, I love reading about it and watching videos and presentations and just learning about how 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 your brain ticks you know what makes you tick what makes you be the way you are what makes you think the things that you think and i also know that our thoughts are super powerful and so um, tom and i were talking about you know whenever we've wanted to make a big change in our life um, or even just something as simple as buying a new car you know once you've decided on the make and model or the color of it it seems like everywhere you go that's all you can see right because the things that you think about and concentrate on seem to grow and i remember you know way back when we were going to start a family all of a sudden it's like it seemed like everybody was pregnant everywhere I went. I would see these pregnant ladies or these ladies pushing babies in strollers. And so it was just because that's what I was focusing on. And so that was what was um, popping out at me wherever I went, ooh, popping out, talking about pregnant women. So anyway, I so we already had the concept of what we wanted to talk about. And then I just decided to um, Google it and see what I could find out about um, focusing and about the brain. And I read a really interesting article that was called What You Focus On Is What Becomes Powerful, Why Your Thoughts and Feelings Matter. And this was written by psychologist Karen Young. And she has a website called heysigmund.com. Isn't that cute? 
And of course, it the whole thing that I read um, made me think about how it applies to our plant-based lifestyle in a world where we're very different and going against what mainstream society wants us to do. Is there a problem with my mic? You keep looking. Yeah, I, I feel like it, there's that, a problem. Yeah, let me not talk off screen. <laughs> the, the right side of your jacket's rubbing on the clip, so bring it, drop it down like an inch and a half. Okay. Right, the right and yeah, and so that the other part of your jacket's not, now bring it back up. Sorry, everybody. Too low. I, I don't want you to listen to that sound. Hey, how about if I put it there? That's, yeah, the two, the two sides of your jacket can't touch. Okay. Woo. Or, okay. or, or terrible things happen. All right. Okay. I could just see him out of the corner of my, <laughs> my eye looking at me. You guys know what I was talking about. There was this scraping noise. Okay, here you go. Okay, thank you. So the truth is the things that we focus on really grow and become bigger and bigger and more powerful in our life. That can be good if we're focusing on something positive, but then it can be negative if we're focusing on something that isn't positive and isn't good for us. So our thoughts and feelings really do matter and they have an, a direct effect on our brain. So Karen Young said that this is called experience dependent neuroplasticity. Yeah, it's a mouthful, right? What it means in simple terms is that our experiences change our brain. It's constantly changing. Our brain is to be the best that it can be and it's trying to serve us well. So inside our skull, we have billions of neurons. Those are our brain cells and those work together to shape us into who we are. So different neurons are responsible for different parts of our experiences. And that is like everything from you know, sleeping, eating, falling in love, laughing, learning new things. I mean, being, um, you know, sports, whatever it is that we're doing, we have neurons that are responsible for all those different acts. So every time, every time we do something, the relevant neurons switch on. And then the neurons that don't get used as much wither away, leaving more room for the ones that we are constantly using and leaving room for new ones because we can develop new ones. Karen Young says that's why we can all sing the alphabet song or recite the alphabet without even having to think about it because when we were kids we heard that alphabet song so many times and we had to recite our ABCs in kindergarten or preschool so many times that the neural pathways are extremely well established and so we no longer have to strive to be able to do that it's not work for us it's in there we have that memory and we can pull it up at any time and if you've got grandkids you know what we're talking about because we're singing that song all the time uh, with the grandkids so everything that we experience is going to alter our brain structure in some way. Who we spend our time with. Ooh, what does that mean? I spend my time with Tom. Uh, our activities, our feelings, our thoughts, all influence who we are and who we can become. And when we adopt a whole food plant-based lifestyle, we have a really big learning curve ahead of us. You know, we're taking in lots of new information. We're trying to adapt it to our life. We're trying to forget about the standard American diet that we were used to. So for instance, back in 2013, when I first adopted a whole food plant-based lifestyle, I had read, you know, books about it. I had watched videos. I knew this is what I wanted to do, but implementing it wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. And, you know, I had to learn a new way to think about how I was going to do my meal planning because on the sad, sad diet, I would always, you know, take some animal product and then I would formulate the meal around that. So I no longer had that formula to go by. And at first, it was a struggle for me. I mean, it made my brain hurt thinking about all of this and I had stress and worry. Um, but instead of getting obsessed about it and thinking this is gonna fail, what I did do is I just kept looking for answers. You know, I did research, I tried recipes, I tried different things until I got to a point where it started to become easier. So Karen Young says, and I love this, so I'm going to um, quote her from her article. If you let your mind settle on self-criticism, 
self-loathing, pain, distress, stress, worry, fear, regret, guilt. These feelings and thoughts will shape your brain. You will be more vulnerable to worry, depression, anxiety, and be more likely to notice the negatives of any situation. You will frame things in a negative way and you will be barreled off track by what you could have or should have done. So on the other hand, if you focus on positive feelings and frame situations with a tilt towards the positive, eventually your brain will take on a shape that reflects this. Hardwiring and strengthening connections around resilience, optimism, gratitude, positive emotion, and self-esteem. And I love that. So, you know, you want to think about what this makes me think about is the situations that we find ourselves in when we are around people who are following the standard American diet, which for most of us, you know, where our whole extended family or our entire group of friends doesn't eat exactly like we do. And so it's very easy to fall into the trap of starting to feel sorry for yourself when you're going to get together with other people socially because, you know, especially if, if you're having to change your diet for health reasons or to lose weight, then you might feel jealous because, you know, they're eating your old favorite dessert or your old favorite main entree. And, um, and when I talk to people who are struggling, they tell me this, this is a real struggle for them. They feel left out. They feel deprived. If you can turn that around, turn that negative around into a positive, because what I do as I don't, I don't feel left out. I don't feel like I'm being deprived. Instead, I feel like what a shame it is that they don't know better. Um, I'm then, and I turned it into feeling grateful that I know the right way to eat for optimal health, for wellness, for losing weight, for maintaining my weight. And so I focus on the positive part. I, I, I tell myself, you know, you know, feel proud that you eat the way you do, feel proud that you don't give in to those temptations. You know, I'm just grateful that I know what I know and that I've adopted a healthy lifestyle. Um, you want to jump in here on this too, Tom? Or were you not listening to what I was talking about? <laughs> I, was, I was kind of reading the chat. <laughs> healthy that's, lifestyle. That's what I was afraid of. You were reading. What, what's going on? You're in, you you're know on, that I, we're on camera A now. Okay. So I was talking about how in uh, social situations, we don't feel deprived that we're not eating all the animal products that everyone else is eating if we're in a mixed group and we instead we feel like really proud that we eat well, healthy. Well it, it's I've talked about this on some other lives I get a sense of you know because we, we we inadvertently wind up evangelizing some on the plant-based diet but only if, if people ask. Ask yeah but it's like I have information I have knowledge and that knowledge benefits me and um, it's like it's like you've got a secret, and, and and because you've got a secret, then you've got something on the other people. It's it's not it's it's a maybe not a healthy feeling, but yeah, it's it's oh, not. You feel a little bit superior. Oh, is what I hear that's you say. the word I was avoiding. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a little bit superior. Uh huh. Yes, that's the emotion, and so. Um, you know, we have fun when we talk about when we see things in people's grocery carts and stuff. And we and I have said, I can see where it's really easy to become a, a judgmental vegan. Um, but you, you start looking at everything through a different lens. Right. Because your brain thinks differently because that's kind of the way you've trained it uh, with all the information and that we have and the foods we eat and what we consider, what we look forward to eating and and what is not food. Right. You know. Yeah, so it's not a negative situation for us. It's a very positive situation. Yeah. But in the beginning, I can definitely see how it can be a negative, um, bring on a negative mm -hmm. feeling for people who are maybe struggling or just transitioning because I mean, we were fortunate. You get into tribal behaviors and you want, you know. The, you want to, you, you don't want to stand out being the oddball. You, you wind up trying to go along get along by going along 
And of course, that's one of Dr. Doug Lyle's lectures is going along without, getting along without going along. Mm -hmm. So this does kind of play right into that. Um, but when you have this knowledge and exercise it and, and hold your ground with your own, what's going on inside your own head, and that's a little bit of a battle or a struggle on the front end. But as you adapt to that, your self-esteem meter inside your head then does start mm -hmm. to go up. And then, and it's, then that's where you start winding up feeling superior because your self-esteem meter has gotten out of control. But that's sort of a good thing. So anyway. Yeah, but it, it's a, it definitely is a mindset. Okay. And so, and even if you are trying to lose weight, um, if, you, if the focus is all on the weight, it's just, I think it's just much harder than if your focus is on getting healthy. So when people go on a diet, that seems to have a beginning and end to it because, you know, we've, if, if you've been a yo-yo dieter like I was for um, decades, then you're used to going on a diet and going off a diet. So it had a beginning and an end. And that is not what this is. A whole food plant-based um, eating style is actually a lifestyle. This is a lifestyle. It's not a diet. This is something that's doable for the rest of your life and there's really no point in starting it if you don't have the intention to follow through and continue to eat this way for the rest of your life. So, and once you make the commitment to do it, it does start to get easier. And so if you, I, I feel that if you focus on um, the fact that you're doing this for your health, not just weight loss, that it also makes the losing weight part of it much easier. Because if you're doing, if you're thinking of it as you're just doing this to lose some weight, it's very easy to say, well, you know, I'm going to go ahead and eat that, whatever it is, cupcake, chocolate bar, whatever it is. But if your focus is on getting healthy, then you can, you can stop yourself and ask yourself, you know, does that really help me eating that? Does that really help me achieve my goals? And of, of course, the answer is going to be no. So, and I also think if you focus on all the amazing, incredible options that we have to eat, rather than the things that you're having to give up, that also makes it much easier. I know sometimes when I'm talking to people who are struggling a little bit and I look at their food diaries and I say, well, you know, if you could give up these things, then you would probably, you know, get off your plateau and be able to start losing weight again. And so many people will say to me, but I've already given up so many things. I shouldn't have to give up anymore. You know, I'm starting to feel deprived. Well, I don't feel that way at all because I look at it as when I give those things up, I'm getting healthier and I'm gonna be able to achieve the goals that I want to achieve. And so, and you know, there's an old saying that nothing tastes as good as thin feels. Well, you can take that and say, well, nothing feels as good as Health, nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. And so, you know, I've eaten cupcakes and cakes and donuts and cookies and I've eaten all that stuff. I know what all that stuff tastes like. I don't have, I don't need to have it again. If I, if I want to conjure up a memory of that flavor or the experience, I can do that in my head, but I certainly don't need to eat any of that because the pleasure of that food lasts for just seconds and then it's gone. But the feeling of being healthy is 24 seven and it goes on and on and on. And so it's just reframing how we think of things makes just a huge impact on us. And if you reframe it into um, positive over the negative, it just gets easier and easier. So, um, so she also, Karen Young goes on to say that we all have the power to change our brains. Here's the deal. We are hardwired to look for threats to our well-being. That is a survival technique to keep us alive as well as listening to our feelings and our intuition. So we are hardwired to look for the negative stuff. So you have to overcome that and you have to, it's just like practice makes perfect, right? No matter what we're learning, whether we're learning a musical instrument or we're, you know, learning how to do some kind of a, a craft or a sport 
or um, you know we've learned a lot of new things on technology and our computers and cameras in order to do these videos and it takes practice and the more we practice it the easier it gets so the problem is that what we encounter is that the bad things seem to stick out in our minds with us so it's just like Tom and I can do one of these videos and we might get you know 50 wonderful comments and then we'll get one negative one. What do you think stands out for us? Do you want to chime in on this, Tom? Is, you know, we'll start to think about that negative comment. We'll talk about it, like why would that person have said that? You know, was there something that we did or said that was wrong? Or, you know, why did that happen? And that will go with us for days. We'll think about that instead of focusing on the 50 wonderful amazing comments that we got and i think i think that that um you know we all tend to do that if you have a bad uh customer service experience when you go somewhere um, I, Tom, you probably know the statistics on this from having been in sales. If somebody is dissatisfied, and you're not on camera, no, okay, yeah. If somebody is dissatisfied, I'm trying to remember the number. I think it. They'll tell. A minimum of thirteen people. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, that there's some. Yeah, it's a 10, 10, 10 in excess of a ten times. Uh, negative effect yeah because they'll tell much more people about their negative experience many more, yeah. than they will about their positive yeah. experience because we're hardwired to pick up on the negative and things and that's a survival fear yep um, um, evolutionary thing you know it's just like um, when we're talking about you know a couple of stories that Tammy and I share is we've had you know out of the thousands of comments there were two comments and one comment was that uh, Tammy talks too much and that she should let talk, uh, Tom talk more. That was one comment. And it's like, I, I, did I ever show that to you or do I delete it and oh, no, tell you about it? No, no, I saw I it. Okay. And then, uh, and then kind of, you know, within a few weeks of that, another comment came through and said that Tammy is such an awesome presenter, which I know she is. And Tom said, just keep quiet and run the camera. <laughs> that we really don't need him in front of the camera. <laughs> so, and we were like, what? But that stings, right? The comment that the person said about me, that kind of stung. And it stuck with me. And the comment that you got kind of stung and kind of no, stuck with you as that, well. No, I just think that, you know, we, all, I, we talk about the, the, the lens that we look through as we view life. Mm -hmm. They're looking through dirty lenses. <laughs> They need new lenses. Our lenses are fine. <laughs> there you back, go. Back to you. Okay, so I like what Karen Young says. Uh, she says that when you have the positive on your radar, when you, let's say you're in a situation, um, things are going on and something positive is happening, recognize that and hold on to that thought and that feeling of that positive um, action for at least 20 seconds because what that does is that starts the neurons firing in your brain and after doing this exercise holding that positive thought and feeling for 20 seconds the experience will be hard wiring into your brain it'll be firing off neurons and strengthening the connections which helps shape your experiences you can actually start to train your brain to notice the good and positive things in your life. Now, it takes time to develop the new habits, so we have to practice, practice, practice. And so what I'm going to do when we get those negative comments is one, we're going to delete them because we don't need to read those negative comments. And when you come to our YouTube channel or our Facebook page or our Instagram page, you don't need to read something negative and hateful that someone has said either. And so we're just going to go boop, delete and get rid of it. And then when we read the positive comments, we can hold on to those and think about those and relish those for 20 seconds and build those good neuron connections. 
So I was listening to Hidden Brain this morning. I don't know if any of you listened to that on NPR. I love it. It's fascinating. And he was talking today about an experiment that a group of neurologists did. And it, it involves golf and I don't golf and I don't know anything about golf. But what they did is they took two groups of golfers and they gave them all the same putter. But they told one group that it was a Nike putter, which I guess was a superior putter. And the other group was not told that it was a Nike, but both groups had the exact same putter. Well, the group that had the putter that they thought was an expensive elite Nike putter actually scored higher and had an easier time than the group who had just uh, what they thought was just a regular putter. And they said that is just the power of the brain. And so because Nike is well known, because they have the just do it, because um, they have, you know, built um, a whole a positive stigma around their brand, then if you are lucky enough to get to use it, you just feel more powerful. You feel better. You feel like you can execute whatever it is you're doing better. And it's purely mind over matter. And so I just love that because I think that just opens us up to so many possibilities. It's just, it's kind of like the placebo effect. Like, you know, if um, I've dealt with the sciatic nerve problem since the pandemic started and people have written to me and given me tons of different suggestions of things to do. And, you know, some of them I'm still doing because I started feeling better once I started doing some of them. And I told Tom, I don't even com com care if this is just a placebo effect. If, you know, because so many people recommended I drink celery juice, fresh celery juice every day. And I started doing that and I started feeling better. And so I don't even care if that's just a placebo effect because I feel better. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And so our mind is just extremely um, powerful and we, you know, we can overcome so many things. And so um, I just want to share all of that with you guys. And I would like to know what your thoughts are about that. I just think, um, you know, like, okay, here's a, a good example. One day when we were watching the grandkids and, and um, I don't even remember what the incident was, but the, we'd had a great day, but we'd had one incident with um, one of the kids and, you know, it was disruptive and that ch the child was crying and so forth. And when their um, papa got home from work and he said, hey, how was today? And our oldest granddaughter said, oh, papa, such and such happened today and it was just awful. And I stopped her and I said, the whole day wasn't awful. That was like, you know, 15 minutes out of our day. But it was just so interesting to me, even though we'd had a really great day and lots of fun things had happened, that one, you know, dramatic 15 minutes that we had really stood out in her mind. And, you know, so I thought, oh, how many times do we do that? You know, so we can have a, a really great day, but one little thing happens and then we say, oh, you know, today was just awful. Today was an awful day. So again, it's kind of, you know, having an attitude of gratitude a little bit and um, positive thinking and um, looking for the good in the situations instead of the negative. So Tom, any questions? Yeah, there are going to be some questions. I was trying to find the, the URL for the... Um, um, the URL for? For the article that you're referencing here. It's from heysigmund.com. We should put it yes. in the show notes. I will, uh, uh, let me get on screen. Here's uh, the name of it. What you focus on is what becomes powerful. Why your, why your thoughts and feelings matter. Okay. So and that's I, on heysigmund.com, which is H-E-Y-S-I-G-M-U-N-D.com 
web website. I'll, I'll put it in the show notes. So okay, but but, the, but once you get to heysaving.com, I had to search for a little bit to you find did. this particular article. You did. It's mm -hmm. a picture of a lady sitting on a bench looking sideways. Yes. If you if you end up going there, so um, so anyway, okay. Um, there are questions. I'm going to go back up to the top. Okay. There were a couple of them early on, which I uh, promised I would catch up with. So I'm going to scan here and look for those question marks to jump out at me. Sounds good. So, um, so please be patient. I'm very patient. There was a lot of pre-roll, pre-scroll stuff going on here. <laughs> you guys are a chatty group and that's awesome. Okay, here we go. Here's the first one. This is from Linda. Um, how do you understand if we are eating too many greens and getting too many oxalates? Is there anything we can eat, i.e. lemon, you know, acids to counteract too many oxalates? I don't know if we're... We are not qualified to, to answer, answer that, that question. Where can we go? That, where can someone go that, to get that? That is a very good question for um, one of the plant-based doctors. I know that Dr. Clapper is doing like a question a day on Instagram. So if you, you can probably go to his Instagram account and find out how you could submit a question to him. Um, and any of the plant-based doctors that have like a Facebook page, if they're accepting questions on it, that would be a good one. Or if you have, if you have a problem with um, kidney disease or uh, creating kidney stones and so oxalates you're having to watch problem. your oxalates then you have then, to modify the plant then you mix. would need to work that out with your doctor um, and find out you know like how much spinach is okay for you to have or maybe you need to go to some lower oxalate type greens also do check nutritionfacts.org and see if dr greger has anything on there um, about the oxalates, which he probably does. So we do know that some people um, do have to be really careful about their oxalate levels. Uh, Gwendolyn is wanting to know if one of us are going to memorize Dr. Esselton's greens list and reel them off like he likes to do to show mm, off. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going I'm, to? I don't have any intention of doing that. Okay. No. Yeah, if I was able to do that, I, I, you could. It. I answered the comment in writing. It, it would make my self-esteem go up if I It would. If I, you if could I do that. that. I'm sure you could do that as well as he does. You know, um, kind of on or off topic, I'm not sure which, Tammy talked about when you challenge your brain with with new learning curves, I guess is the common phrase for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and she was talking about how that's impacted our lives, not only with the food, but having to, you know, the program I use to edit videos, it's Adobe Premiere Pro, and it's an incredibly complex program. And I remember when I was first digging into that and having to do so much study and research to figure out how to, to make it do the things I wanted to do, uh, I, I felt like physically I could feel my brain hurting in, in the back up here. <laughs> Although I know the thinking is in front, but it hurt back here. But I, I tell Tammy, I'm tension. Brain, my brain hurts. Yeah, tension. it's a tension in the back of your head. Yeah, but it's um, really great to learn new things. Well, because I was causing so many unfired neurons to have mm -hmm. to try to connect with each other. And I did used to use a lot of uh, computer um, uh, CAD camera, AutoCAD design in my previous career. And so I was used to using, you know, complex programs for design processes. Um, that this was a whole. This new was a level up from that mm -hmm. in a big way. Yeah. And so, uh, the the bottom line of that is, mentally speaking, I'm sure it helps keep me younger. So. Um, and the exciting thing is that up. we know they used to think that, you know, if some if your brain cells died off, if the neurons died off, that you didn't get new ones. But now we know so much more about the brain, and we know that you can create new ones and so we're never too uh, it's never too late to learn something new and the old adage if you don't use it you lose it is so true not only in our brain but also our muscles and just you know it's a whole body experience so um, but I'm really into the whole you know being positive having an attitude of gratitude and just um, the power that that has and I think especially when you're transitioning to such a different lifestyle especially in a society that doesn't really support eating healthy and 
and being healthy, it's really important to keep a positive attitude about it. And self-talk is um, a really big thing because who do we listen to the most? We listen to our inner voice. Mm. So any more questions? I'm going to listen to John Warren. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. John just gave just, us a super just chat. Landed a super Thank chat you, on the page here. Thank you so much. That is so sweet. Thank you very much. We really appreciate yeah. it. Okay, White Whitener Shoe says, "How do you change your mindset that eating a lot of starch will not make you gain weight?" You had that uh, kind of in a, in a reverse when you found out you could eat starch. So, so the the question is, how do you change your mindset when you have a fear of eating a lot of starch will make you gain weight? Yeah, I think you just you have to. Um, I talked about this in one of our other videos about how you you have to surrender. You just you have to surrender that um, I'm going to give this new information a try, and I'm going to see how it works. And you have to try it because the proof is in trying it. And so um, you just have to give it a try. You know, it's kind of the old Nike, just do it. Sometimes you have to act as if you believe it's going to work. And it's and not like anything that happens isn't reversible. You can think of it as an experiment and take some of the fear factor out of that because yes. you're going to try it for 21. That's where the 21 days comes in because that's the psychological threshold where a new behavior can be learned and then in fact become habit. So do a 21 day experiment of eating starch, see where you are, assess and adjust. And so. that is something that Dr. Lyle suggests too. Think of it as an experiment and tell yourself, I'm gonna do this you know, for 21 days or maybe 30 days, whichever you choose. I'm going to try this for 30 days. It's just an experiment. It doesn't mean that I have to do this forever, but I'm just gonna try it for a while because that takes kind of takes the pressure off of you and then try it. And here's, here's the thing. We are living proof that eating starch does not make you fat, right? Because we eat a lot of starch Chef AJ eats way more starch than I do. Mm -hmm. She eats two pound potatoes. I mean, when she comes and stays with us and I have to cook potatoes, you know, cause I, I feed her and I always send her back home with we food. We buy extra potatoes. Oh, we do because I mean, she can eat a couple pounds of potatoes at one sitting and she's a tiny lady. And so you have to look around in the plant-based community and see that all these plant-based eaters are eating all of this starch, all of the McDougalers, um, they're eating tons of starch and they are not overweight and they are not sick and, um, and it's working for them. And so I think you look around and see who's successful doing it and then you tell yourself it's an experiment and you give it a try and see what your results are. Okay, John Warren has a question for us. Yes. Uh, we are leading a group that is new to Whole Food Plant Base, and Meatless Monday is a big challenge, evidently, within the group. Suggestions for the group to help guide them in taking baby steps, I think is what you're asking, that if you're managing a group of people in uh, being new to Whole Food Plant Base, and they've got to take on a Meatless Monday. So subs, I think plant-based substitutes, you know, what... You, we're taking away their meat. I remember being there. <laughs> okay. And what did we replace it with? Well, you give them something that's really delicious. Now, for some people, it depends on the group. Some people, if you were to, you know, give them a lentil loaf recipe, they're going to totally compare that to um, a meatloaf. And it's probably not going to stand up to their expectations. So sometimes it's better to offer them a recipe that is like totally different. It just depends on the the um, group of people. But you know... Like uh, your taco lentil filling where you don't really know that it's not meat it's because it's taco filling and it looks like taco filling and its texture is taco filling and it is taco filling but yeah. it's just not meat. Or even just like beans, rice and corn. Do a burrito bowl and beans, rice, corn, and our chipotle nacho cheese sauce, and some homemade uh, sauce, salsa, and uh, you know, let everybody make a burrito bowl, and 
uh, green onions and fresh cilantro. So there's tons of flavor, there's tons of color, it's really pretty and it tastes delicious. And so, and you know, like you can um, just take some ripe plantains and slice those and brown those either in the oven or in a skillet and cut those up. And when you do that, it kind of looks like chicken. I, I kind of hate to say that, but it does because I've been eating plantains this past week. And you've been focusing on and finding plantains. I know. And yeah. they have, yeah. you know, um, they have a nice chewy texture to them. And so it's something that you can really sink your teeth into. Um, so it kind of depends on the group. It kind of depends on the age of the people as well and how open and receptive they are. You know, for um, like we just, we had family over and we did um, the barbecue lentil loaf muffins that are on the blog. And, you know, we all think those are just amazing and incredible. And I don't think of them as being like meatloaf anymore. They're lentil loaf muffins. Yeah. But for somebody that's transitioning there, they would have that mouthfeel flavor, barbecue flavor texture. Yeah. You know, John, one thing that I went through, and, in, and we don't recommend it now, but I was not fully educated at the time, is I did transition off of uh, animal products with a lot of the manufactured uh, plant-based fake meats and, uh -huh. and that sort of thing, loaded with oil, probably loaded with sodium. Um, but I was a, a big, you know, meat eater and so I just want to transition away with all that field row stuff and you know we didn't have the fake um, beyond meat and that stuff right yeah. now. Yeah so but. if you're providing recipes for them like making a chili you know chili is delicious without meat and lots of beans in it. Um, if you like a lentil chili my favorite lentil chili is the black and red lentil chili from the fat free vegan kitchen blog and I serve that to people who follow the standard American diet and they love it. So a fun that's a fun meal for people who are just transitioning or you know um, Chef AJ's red lentil chili is really good but we do like to add dark red kidney beans to it just to give it you know more texture and more bite to it. But then Tell them to serve it with brown rice in the bottom of the bowl and then the black and red lentil chili on top of the brown rice. Excuse me. And then on top of that, I like to oven roast kabocha squash in wedges, which Tom roasted that for us today. And then I like to serve two wedges of the roasted kabocha squash on top of it. And then you can sprinkle it with uh, diced green onions and a little bit of fresh cilantro and a squeeze of fresh lime juice as well. And that is super delicious and filling. And if, the, if they're eating uh, any type of flour still, then they could make vegan cornbread muffins. We have a really good recipe on our blog. There's lots of them in different forks over knives, has some good recipes too. And you know, that is like a nice, meal, it tastes good, nobody will miss the meat. So, you know, kind of think about what your favorite meals are, your favorite recipes, and maybe offer those up to them. And they're only doing it one day a week, right? They're just doing Meatless Monday. Um, and so breakfast is super easy because you can have pancakes or you can have uh, oats or you can have waffles or you can do a smoothie or you can do, I mean, if they're still eating bread, they can have avocado toast. There's lots of different things that they could have for breakfast. Um, and then, you know, lunch can be like um, one of the chickpea salads, or it can be beans, rice, and corn. I mean, you know, it can be a veggie burger and fries. And if they don't have an air fryer, they can still make oil-free fries the in the oven. It seems that the possibilities are endless. Um, SB, um, SB has a, a kind of a comment here that resonates with me. I, uh, I don't want a lentil loaf to taste like meat. Yeah. <laughs> but in the beginning, we think we do. But then your mind moves 
past that. I like the texture. I like to be able to bite, you know, Tammy's little lentil loaves that she makes in the little muffin shaped pans. Um, but at the end of the day, what people on the standard American diet is they take a bunch of herbs and spices, plant things, and dump it on stuff that otherwise doesn't really have any desirable flavor of its own mm -hmm. to make it taste a certain way. Well, we may still be drawn to those flavor profiles, whether it's barbecue or savory or or, or hot and spicy and, and dump that on whatever vegetable product we want to dump it on. Yeah, you make um, a really good point. It's not so much the meat, the flavor of the meat, meat that we're missing. The meat is a carrier. Yes. It's a carrier it's of the, the flavor. Yes. It's but the, the flavor is not coming from... The meat. It's the flavor of the things that we adorned the yeah. meat with. I think that's, that's yeah, really so, good. So what you put those flavors on is another brain training yeah. exercise. But I think ethnic food is really easy, like Indian food, that's really easy. Um, Greek, you can make, you know, we have a tabbouleh salad, we have um, some oven roasted vegetables, hummus, you know, that makes, you can do um, baked falafel, you know, that makes a really wonderful meal that's Greek. Nobody's going to miss the meat because there wasn't any meat intended in that meal to begin with. And Indian food, all the different curries mm. and, and so forth yes. are really easy. Uh, SB, and SB also adds, Tammy needs to start a plant-based line of foods to order online or in the markets. Well, SB, I have a solution for that. <laughs> we don't have time to do that, but we, we know somebody that does. Uh, the, the name of the outfit is Mama Says, and mm -hmm. you will find our link down in the, in the show notes here. Uh, we've ordered uh, Mama Says meals out to here. They come frozen and ready. You, you literally take them out of the package and heat them up and eat them. Mm -hmm. And all of those flavors that uh, she just reeled off reminded me of that. So that does exist. It, it costs a little bit of money, but... Uh, They're really delicious, and there's an SOS-free package that they that chef yeah. aj directed them to make that salt oil and sugar free yeah and we ordered that and everything was delicious yeah. so drop down into the show notes i'm pretty sure where's the show more button i don't know if i have that on this screen but yeah i put mama says his link um down in there um because that, that that's kind of an emergency backup uh thing um so okay uh, More questions. Carol says, I've noticed that the sad diet has an aftertaste but I, that I don't like anymore. You know, some Even things, some of, of the things have a, what I call, I tell you, boy, that tastes processed. Mm -hmm. If we eat something and there's a processed flavor, especially anything that comes from grains or whatever. Um, I'm not talking about Oh, because you had some cereal. You had some kind of cereal or something. Yeah, and it tasted a while back. like factory processed. Yeah, you were like, whoa, that was so processed. Because yeah. our, our taste buds have changed. Our flavor profiles are, you know, we appreciate whole foods now and we can really taste the difference. Yeah. Catherine says, Mama says it's fresh, not frozen. Um, yeah, it is fresh. And then we threw it in the freezer. You are right. It comes in a box with freezer packs in it to keep it cold. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's fresh. But we got, we got so much of it, we froze most of it. And mm -hmm. I think we only op you know, opened up a couple on the first day we got it. So... Um, yeah, all three, uh, yeah, Tiffany, yeah, we, t all three moderators are here. Tiffany uh, wasn't here at first, I don't think, but she showed up here a little bit later. Thank you, moderators. So, um, you know, another thing on, on moderators is, and I, I don't know, you guys haven't addressed this exactly, moderators can uh, manage bad comments on the, app, on the replay as well. Yeah. And so I don't know if we just don't get as many anymore or if you guys are cleaning house before we walk in the door, but um, I'm not noticing as many, you know, uh, negative brain impact comments uh, as I was. I think you guys might be taking to some of those out before we see them. Um, can you recommend any kind of, cook? this is from Kim, any kind of cooking spray without oil? Hey Kim, I had your, I had your question written down on here because um, oh, Kim- Oh, so you're Kim, taking a check mark right there. Yeah, okay. because Kim, Kim had sent um, a Facebook message to me. So no, actually if, if there's some recipes, some older plant-based recipes, too. okay, if there's some older plant-based recipes, on the blog that say anything about um, spraying the pan with oil. That was before when I, we first transitioned and before I gave up oil. So we are actually oil free. So we don't use any oil. So if you are going to 
um, saute something in a pan. I have, we have a video all about how and why to be SOS free. And I have a video, it was one of our lives that we did a few months ago on how to saute vegetables without oil. And then if you want to bake something and you don't want it to stick to the pan, we recommend using silicone bakeware and easily um, found on Amazon. We have some pieces uh, listed on our Amazon affiliate page. The link is below in the show notes. And you can also use your regular pan and you can just line it with parchment paper as well. And so whether you're gonna bake something or do a casserole or, or what have you, you can line it with parchment paper and that will also help. So, um, so we don't use any oil. It is damaging to the endothelial cells. It doesn't have any healthy properties in it. Um, it's, all of the good stuff has been taken out. It's highly refined and extremely high calorie density. So not good for weight loss and also not good for our health. So I uh, hope that helps yeah, Jesse you. Jesse did a follow-up question back to Kim. Was there a particular dish or process that she was looking Yeah, that would to, be good to, to know. To use the oil on. Yeah, so. so if you can give us a little more information, we can give you really specifics for that as well. Okay. Oh, somebody's saying give us a thumbs up if you're liking it. Yes, Randy, please do. Give Randy's, us a thumbs Randy up. Is, Randy's rooting for that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Randy. We pre so, appreciate yeah, that. So, yeah, Lori, Lori's here saying that the oil suff suffocates. If I... If we're out somewhere or eating somebody else's food and there is and there's hidden oil, it just yeah. it coats your tongue, it gets on your lips, your mouth starts feeling all slimy. It's gross. Yeah. So, and and I used to didn't think I could do anything without putting a tablespoon of oil in the pan first. So yeah. Um, Okay, so um, I'll answer one of my Facebook questions sure, here. Sure, yeah, go ahead. Tracy, I think we're caught up. Okay, Tracy wanted to know when batch prepping salads, is it okay to add cut bell peppers or do you add them just before chopping? And I don't add them in the beginning because they do start to um, deteriorate and get watery after they've been cut. And so I would add those either before you start chopping or after you chop. I actually like the peppers to be added in after I chop my salad because I don't want them to get cut up in little tiny, tiny pieces. I like them to be a little bit bigger, but that's personal um, preference. So look at, we did a video a couple months ago called Batch Prepping 2020, Batch Prepping Salads 2020. And look at that video and I show you exactly how I batch prep the salads. And then for chopping, we don't chop the salads until the day that we are going to eat them. Now, every once in a while, I have to be at our daughter's house really early in the morning. And I will go ahead and chop it the night before and it will be okay, but I don't add vinegar or I'll put all my other ingredients in separate containers that I want to add to the chopped salad. And, um, and it does okay for that too. I prefer it to be chopped in the morning if I'm gonna eat it for lunch, but, um, but it does work if I chop it before I go to bed at night. So hopefully that helps. And let's see, I think I had, um, I, I, can't, I couldn't remember if I had answered this question last week and I didn't have time to go back and look at the video, but Ruth had asked about um, her, the cheese sauce. She made the vegan cheese sauce and she wanted to know if it can be frozen. I actually have never frozen it, but other people have frozen it and told us that it works. It sometimes separates when you thaw it out, but they just put it back in the blender and give it a whirl in the blender and that will take care of the separation and then you're good to go. And James wrote to us and wanted to know if we had any experience with the um, Instant Pot air fryer slash pressure cooker and because they don't have an air fryer and they're interested in it. So, well, we have the Breville Smart Oven Air, which is back behind me, which is, you know, maximum um, uh, capacity for an air fryer. We don't have the Instant Pot air fryer, but we have the Milthy one, which I believe is 
similar. And so what this does, for those of you who don't know, this fits on top of either a six quart or an eight quart electric pressure cooker. It has to be one that has the stainless steel liner. It cannot be the Teflon liner. And so you get this and this sits on top of it instead of the pressure cooker lid. And then this has the heating element right here and it turns the pressure cooker into a little air fryer. And so this is called the crisp lid. This comes from the Milthy company. And so what you get is you get a tall trivet that go, gets put down inside the stainless steel um, liner and then you get a basket. And so this is the capacity that you have. So I can do like two sweet potatoes cut in half or you know I can fill this with, um, I've, I've done like potatoes, a veggie burger, and corn on the cob in here for myself. So it makes enough for like one person. And um, sometimes if Tom has the, the, the big brevel busy with making his chips for his taco salad, then I'll go ahead and use this to air fry whatever I want to air fry for dinner. Oh, and this also comes with, um, it comes with this little, um, hot pad and a pair of tongs so that you can um, safely take things out. So it works really great. It actually works faster than the Breville because it's a smaller capacity and it's it sits much closer. The um, heating element sits much closer to the food so it actually will brown the fries much faster than the Breville does, at least like five minutes faster. So this works really well. I don't have any experience with the Instant Pot one, but if you go to Mrs. Plant, you can just look up Mrs. Plant on Facebook. And Amy is a um, internet friend of mine and wonderful plant-based cook. And she ha actually bought the Instant Pot combo air fryer pressure cooker and she loves it and says that it works really well. So if you go to her Facebook page and I don't know if you can do a search on her page, but you could certainly go through and uh, find her post that she did about it. And she was really quite happy with it and says it works well. If you're interested in the Milky, we have a link below in the show notes. Um, I have a Milky link down in, you know, towards the bottom of the uh -huh. show notes. And um, I'm going to take a quick look at that to, just to make sure Vitamix, Aero Garden, Super Cubes. Um, you know what? I will. Here it is, Milthy. Milthy Kitchen Appliances. Yes, I do. I do have a Milthy um, link down in there. And what I, what I wanted to say about that is and we should add, did we add the Instant Pot air fryer to our page? I our don't equipment think we page? have yet, I need but to we do can. that. The, the, the reason, uh, there, there's been some transition going on with Milthy. Um, those of you that follow the blog closely may have noticed that a lot of our uh, sidebar ads on the Milthy uh, products went away. Uh, the pandemic uh, supply chain, the, the lack of supply chain because of the pandemic hit them pretty hard and so there, a lot of their products were out of stock. I believe the Crisp Lid and it's the Multipot 2.0 are back in stock. But running parallel with that, uh, like within a few months, the milky company got purchased by another company <laughs> and so all of the folks that we used to work with up in the northwest somewhere um, uh, are, aren't there anymore and the new company is going through and sorting out you know everything that they inherited evidently i don't know the any facts of that and they still do have the affiliate program in place but i spoke i, I corresponded through email um i believe with the ceo of the new milky mm -hmm. company and said, you know, my, my discount code's not working for my, for my subscribers. And basically he said that they're in transition and that the affiliate program is something that they haven't, you know, caught up with, with dealing with yet. And so there's nobody to, to fix that. So we still have the link. Uh, you can still go there and get to the Milton company and make a nutmeg notebook purchase. We are still affiliates. Uh, and they also have some of their products are also on Amazon, which you can get through our on our Amazon. Amazon page as well. Yeah. Uh, he said that they're coming out with some new products, uh, working on some new products for later in the in the summer, and that they will get their affiliate uh, thing going back in gear. So unfortunately, right now I don't have the ten dollars off. This was a long way to get to that, <laughs> because the affiliate program with them is broke right now uh, in terms of the discount. 
Um, but we do have Multipot 2.0. I love my Multipot 2.0 for making my steamed vegetables. Um, well, he hates it if I use it and I have something in it and he comes down to make his lunch. He's like, oh, you used you used mine. I'm like, I didn't know your name was on She's it. She's got like five Instant Pots and I have one Milty Pot. So We have two Milties. We have an eight quart and a six quart. I have eight quarts too big for anything that I cook. You know, you can always cook a small amount in a big, in a bigger pot. Yeah, I've you heard can. that. So, uh -huh. <laughs> um, any anyway, uh, so did I, did I answer whatever question I was answering? I don't Mil know. Milty's been going through some stuff. Uh, I've taken a lot of the ads off of our page. I will put, I'll reinstate them as we kind of get things sorted out with them, but we still have crisp lids. We still have multi pots, no hand blend. Um, you know, a lot of things stay out of stock on there. So bear with them for a little bit. Big transition plus the pandemic. Okay. Uh, but air fryers are amazing. I don't know how many of you have air fryers. So whether you have a small one, um, my mom bought herself one for Christmas and she's been having a lot of fun with it and making all kinds of things in it. And so, you know, it just, um, to be able to have some crispy kind of foods without oil, is just really fun. Crunchy and you can bite them. And yeah. you can bite into them. Okay, oh, so, by the way, Kim C, that you answered, the, yes. that said thank you for the for the for uh, answering the question about the no oil. Okay, And she great. made the chili burgers last night and they were phenomenal, so. Oh, glad you like them. So Miranda sent me um, a question on Facebook and she wanted to know, she would love to know what the grandchildren eat, what dishes we make, how to cook them, she has a four-year-old. Um, you know, I would love for our daughter to be able to do some videos with me, but she has three children under the age of four, and so there's just... Yeah, four and under. Yeah, uh, and so there's just no, um, there's no good time of day where she can actually uh, do a video and, and help um, execute one, and she doesn't have time to do any blog posts. So there is one blog post that she wrote and on as a guest post for me and it was her um, smoothie and recipe that she uses and so that is on the blog cute story about this um, she made she hadn't made smoothie for quite some time and so uh, last week she made green smoothie in the morning and you know she makes first she makes the one for the kids and then she'll add whatever's left in the blender she'll add more greens to it for herself and so she um, gave it to the kids and uh, one of the twins said ooh wakala and that's you know like icky in Spanish and um, the other twin said it's not wakala it's green ice cream and so then he drank it <laughs> So here is mind over matter yet again, right? When he thought it was some kind of green something, he didn't know what he was, he just knew it was icky. But when his twin told him, no, it's not wakala, it's not icky, it's green ice cream, he happily drank it and he ended up drinking more than any of the other kids. So again, mind over matter, you know, how we, re how we frame things makes such a huge, huge difference. So um, I'll just tell you, I think these three cookbooks are great if you're feeding kids. I've been reading the Nourish book. It does have recipes in the back, but mostly um, what I would recommend for this, the recipes look amazing as well, but just to be able to know that you are giving your family proper nutrition, especially um, children, this is just an excellent, excellent book. So uh, we were able to meet Brenda Davis, the registered dietitian uh, on the cruise that we went on a year ago and she's an excellent speaker and um, her and a pediatrician Dr. Shaw wrote this book together and the information contained in here is just phenomenal. If you didn't see the YouTube video that Chef AJ did uh, interviewing them. It was amazing. They both did uh, PowerPoint presentations during that interview and it was so informative. I learned so much. So if you're feeding children or grandchildren, I highly recommend this book 
and then watch Chef AJ's interview with the two of them. It was amazing. Nourish is the book. It's on our Amazon store. And then uh, our daughter makes a lot of recipes out of plant-powered families for the, um, for the kids and for the whole family. I mean, these are kid-friendly recipes that also adults like. Uh, Drina Burton has a blog, um, Plant Powered. You can go to that or just Google Drina Burton. And her recipes are amazing. I've been a recipe tester for her for some of her cookbook projects. And her recipes are foolproof, delicious, and kid-friendly. And then the Foodie Bar Way, this is written by our friend locally here, um, the nutrition professor, Timory Hagenberger. Highly recommend this book as well. Lots of kid-friendly recipes in here. Um, her children were a little bit older when she made this, so if you have really little ones, this one might be a better pick, but um, we also love this cookbook. Um, very delicious, um, easy recipes to make, and these are all on our Amazon page. So I'll just give you a quick rundown. Although our grandkids are plant-based, they um, eat a more liberal diet than we do, of course, and kids need higher fat foods. So they need things like tofu and avocado and nuts and nut butters and seeds and um, you know, they just, they need more calorie um, dense foods than, than we do. And so they love tofu. Our daughter bakes it. There's a wonderful baked tofu recipe in this. She kind of does her own spin off off of it, but the one that's in here is a really good one to start with. So they will eat a lot of tofu. It's rich in um, protein and uh, has fat and you know it's really good for them and then they're like every other kid uh, even sad eaters they love macaroni and cheese they like pizza um, they do like broccoli they eat a lot of pasta she'll do pasta with lentils and marinara sauce or she makes a pasta bake that she does chop up vegetables really fine in and marinara and um, a, just a lot of veggies in it I don't think she puts any tofu in that, but I'm not sure. Um, the Vegan 8, which is a blog, the Vegan 8 blog, they love the noodle soup that's on there. So it's kind of like a copy of chicken noodle soup, but there's no chicken in it. And it's full of uh, carrots and um, she puts beans in it. I don't know if the original recipe had beans in it or not, but they love that. Peanut butter and jelly on whole wheat, um, avocado toast, oatmeal for breakfast, pancakes, waffles, but the the twins like oatmeal. And so if she tries to offer them something else, um, oftentimes they won't eat it. They just want oatmeal. They love oatmeal. And she batch preps the oatmeal for the week. So she makes a great big like quadruple recipe. It's it's huge. Like her, her big um, like four quart pot is full of oatmeal and then she puts it in a container and she just reheats it with soy milk and she makes green smoothies they love vegan yogurt and they they eat a lot of beans rice and corn and um and they're not you know they're kind of they and fruit they love berries and uh, apples and you know she'll give them she'll make a dip with uh, apples uh, a dip to dip apples wedges in so she'll take almond butter they seem to like almond butter better than peanut butter so she'll take organic creamy almond butter and put a little bit of cinnamon and a little bit of date syrup in it she'll just very gently heat it up in the microwave just to get it soft enough that it's really um, dippable and stir that all together and they dip dip apple slices in it they love bananas um, you know, oranges, whatever fruit, blueberries, strawberries, blackberries. So, um, and that's pretty much what they they eat. They're like the typical. That, that sounds like pretty much an epic blog post, all those kids. I know, I should do a blog post on it, huh? And ha get Katie's input. She just doesn't have time to write a blog, a blog post because, yeah. you know, she does homeschooling um, with them as well. So, um, but anyway, there is, let's see. I was trying to think if there was any, if there, there's some Facebook pages that are geared towards um, uh, 
people who have kids, but I can't think of the names of them right at this moment. Google can help with that. But Google can yeah. help with that. So, did, do we have the Nourish book added to our Amazon book library? Did we? I think we did. Okay. I, I hope we did. All when right. I ordered it, I should have, but you can double check the okay. Amazon. So, to get to these, just go to Amazon shop forward slash nutmeg notebook and we have those a, will all be in the book section. Yeah. Uh, I've got those all I think it's off. in there. I think it is. So there's so. a comment from Robin Klo here that just reminded me of something. Okay. Uh, thank you, Tom. Tammy really enjoyed the, uh, her first live web webinar here oh, with great. you today. Oh, well, welcome. Uh, looking forward to the batch prepping class. What's she talking about? <laughs> well, that's in my new business. Do you see this note? New business. She's prepared. I can relax. <laughs> okay, let me, before we get to new business, I think you may be caught up. There was a lot of conversation here about where to find dietitians and stuff, but I think those questions were answered within within the group. Um, so yeah, go ahead with that. I think we're caught up on questions. Okay, great. So for new business, um, I am partnering with my friend Chef AJ, and we are doing a batch cooking boot camp. So that is going to occur on February 5th from 10 to 2. And uh, like I said, that's with Chef AJ, and it's being hosted by Holistic Holiday at Home, which is the vegan cruise, um, the company that puts on the vegan cruise that we went on last year. And we did um, a cooking, we filled in for Chef AJ on that cruise and did cooking demonstrations yeah, on the cruise. And Justin's going to be um, and, hosting that, yeah, and that, so, that hosted the Holistic Holiday at Cruise. So, at Home Cruise. Yeah, so he'll be on and screen so as well. we have, do you have the link in the show notes for this, for, the, for them to sign up for the boot camp? Um, I'm going to put it there if I haven't. <laughs> um, Tom will put it there. So if you go to No, the, I, it's not in there. No, I have to go to emails and do that. Okay, okay, so if you go to Nutmeg Notebook, our Facebook page, we have pinned to the top of the Facebook page is the link to go to to register. If you use our affiliate link, you save $10. So the fee for this boot camp will be $39, which is really economical for a four hour cooking seminar. And so I have the first two hours, I will be on from 10 to 12. And I am going to be talking all about um, why batch cooking, what is it? Um, camera two. I am looking at camera two. Okay. What is it? Why should you do it? And then I'm going to be going through and discussing what kind of equipment you should have in the kitchen for being plant-based. Um, pantry staple type items. I will be going over the types, different types of containers that um, you can use. I'm going to show economical things, equipment, economical containers for storage, and then I'll show you um, moderate and high end. And so we want to try to cover all of our bases and I'll show you the basic tools. And then if you want some cool tools to add to your kitchen, I'll be showing those as well. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and batch prep my food ahead of time since I'm also covering the educational part of it. And then I'm going to show you what, um, what a week's worth of batch prepped food looks like for me. I just won't be showing you in real time how I made it. But then, but I'll talk to you about what I did and show it to you. And I will also be showing you, you know, my salads because that's a real important part of our batch prepping. And then from 12 to 2, Chef AJ is going to do her batch cooking for the week in real time. So she's going to show you exactly how she does it, what she cooks, and um, you'll get to see how that all goes together. So that'll be really helpful for you. And then she's also going to do a little, like it's about a 30 minute um, exercise that she'll do with you. You'll need paper and pen for it and to teach you how to figure out what you should batch cook um, that will meet your personal preferences and needs. So we're very excited about it. We were on the phone. Um, this morning talking about what we were going to, going to be doing and how it's all going to go together and uh, we were getting really excited. So I think Tom has another question. Okay, or we're back on camera one. Uh, Lori Herman's got this all sorted out. Gustavo and, and Shada 
on February 4th. So if you're a uh, subscriber to our, yes. our mailing list, you saw me send a thing out on that, like on Wednesday. And um, then Tammy and Chef AJ are on the 5th, and then the Super Bowl will be on the 7th. So the food that they do between you, <laughs> Shady Gustavo, and you and Chef AJ, they can eat on Super on Bowl. The 7th. And so, Elspeth. Elspeth is doing a Super Bowl um, on on um, Chibo. She's doing a Super Bowl snack kind of okay. cooking class. Another so, gal that we so know. So you're not wanting for information, that's for sure. The the links that Tammy has asked me to put in the show notes are there. The link to the boot camp. Good. And I also found the complete URL to to Karen Young's Karen Young's article. Um, she is a psychologist, but not a plant-based psychologist uh, per se. We don't know that. Her article did not make any reference to what her eating habits no, was. And she's in Australia. And she's in Australia, but all of the psychology pertains no matter what. Um, yeah, so. I just, you know, really resonated with that article because that's, um, I, I enjoyed learning the science behind it. I already believed in what it said because just because um, positive thinking has been so powerful for me, but um, so I, I just resonated with what she said, and so that's you know I was excited to be able to find something that backed up what I already believed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was fun. And another thing on this coming Friday, um, Tom will be sending out an email um, about the Truth About Weight Loss Summit that Chef AJ and Toby will be doing. And I'm actually a presenter in the Truth About Weight Loss Summit, so you will be able to. We'll send and it that's out. That's a big. That's a. That's one of the. Big that's summits. multi multiple days. I don't know how many people she's interviewed for it at this point. So but if you catch it in real time, it's it's a free. Yeah, summit. it is. You can sign up for it. It's free. They'll have so many speakers a day for multiple days. We don't have all the details about it yet, and I am a presenter in the summit so i'm telling my weight loss story i may have gotten a little emotional when i told it um, and i'm also doing a cooking demo so i'm very excited about that you will also have the opportunity to purchase it if you desire so that you'll be able to go back and rewatch any of the speakers that you really enjoyed but wanted to hear again or anybody that you missed and so we have that coming up. That will go out. You'll get a letter, um, an, an email from us on Friday. If you are not signed up for our on our email list, all you have to do is go to nutmegnotebook.com. And if you've never been there before, a little pop-up screen is going to pop up uh, for you to fill out your email to subscribe. And we usually don't send out more than two emails a week. Camera usually... Two. Usually it's one email a week, but um, that gets you on our email list so that you don't miss exciting events like this. And um, you know, sometimes people say to us, oh, I wanted the Holland Bowl, I didn't know it was on sale. Well, if you were on our mailing list, then you would get that because when one of our vendors that we partner with has an amazing sale on, we send out um, a notice about that to our email list. So do go there. Also, coming up in February, I will be teaching a cooking class on Chibo. And Chibo is a um, online platform that um, was created by the General Electric Company. And when the pandemic started, they wanted to help people learn how to cook at home. And so uh, we met virtually. We met with them um, on the internet a few weeks ago. We had a meeting with them to learn about what they do and what they offer. And so I'm going to start teaching some plant-based cooking classes with them. So I already have my menu set for um, my first class. We just have to go in and finish up um, all the details. So what you will get is when you sign up for the class, you will get the recipes, you will get the, so that you'll be able to go buy the groceries and you'll get that. So you'll get that when you sign up for the class and then the class will be live. I will be cooking and you can cook with me. So I think that's going to be really fun. And you will be able to ask me questions 
while we're cooking. So if we're doing something and, and you've got a question about it, um, I will see on my screen, you'll be able to tap something that says you want to ask a question and then I'll say, yeah, go ahead, you know, um, Tiffany, ask your question and then your face won't show. So, and they, they say that that's what people really like about this platform, um, but I will hear your voice and I will be able to answer your questions in real time. So, um, so I'm super excited. So the class will run between an hour and an hour and a half, and Tom says because I'm so chatty that it'll probably be the hour and a half. And so, um, but that should be really fun. And of course, if, if you aren't able to watch it in real time, you will have access to the replay. And so, you know, it's difficult to pick a time that's good for everyone because we are servicing people that are in multiple different time zones and countries. And so it's just really difficult to pick a day and time that's going to work for everyone. But have no worry, you'll be able to watch the replay. Elspeth says thanks for, <coughs> Elspeth is here. Yes. She says thanks for the shout out on, on oh, her program. Oh, Elspeth, if you're here, Feel free to put a link in the um, comments to your cooking class. I won't delete it. <laughs> and, and I'll ask the moderators not to delete you. Um, you know, YouTube may block it with the links, though. Uh, you know, they put, shouldn't. Go ahead and put it in. If we spot it, we'll find it and we'll approve it. Yeah. Or, or add it in ourselves if need be. Yeah. So just make sure so we have Elf the link. Beth, uh, Elf, Elspeth is a fabulous plant-based um, cook. She's a chef, really. And she makes the most beautiful food you have ever seen. And so, um, so feel free to put a link in there because people would love to take your class. And Chef AJ told me she's going to take your class on um, the one that you have coming up yeah. this coming weekend. Okay, we have a question from Mickey Mouse Camper that I, that I keep forgetting to ask. Okay. Um, our big bowl to prepare the salads in the big stainless steel bowl. Yes. Uh, Mickey Mouse Camper is asking where 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 do we get that? Where did it so, come from? Uh, you know what? We got that at uh, Costco because Costco uh, uh, several years ago had a whole line of stainless steel bowls in various sizes, and we were able to get that then and we have looked that the brand of ours up and we've never been able yeah. to find it so i found a similar one on amazon and what's tricky on those is they'll say 13 quarts but it's like a food prep bowl and so it is so that it, it's like you have to round it you know that they, they like overstate its real capacity so yeah. I, so i think you have to get like so, a 16 quart to make it work so what i would suggest is look and see in the area that you live in if there are any restaurant supply stores and a lot of the restaurant supply stores will sell retail to just regular consumers you don't have to like own a restaurant or anything so check and see if you have any of those in your area and um, call them before you go to make sure that they will sell to someone who doesn't have you know a restaurant and that would probably be your best bet now here we have some stores that kind of cater to some restaurants we have like um, smart and final there's someone on our blog yeah the that's one and, and some people have bought that mm -hmm. and so we do have one on our Amazon but get the page, 16 quart but you definitely want the the 16 quart yeah um in order for it to be deep enough um we ordered one that came and it was too shallow remember yeah. it, it was that was a 13 quart and we sent it back yeah so um so that you know i ha we have not seen those bowls again at costco since we bought ours originally um, sometimes Sam's Club, if you have a Sam's Club membership, sometimes Sam's Club has some things like that because they do sell some things to restaurants. So, um, trying to think where else. But restaurant supply is where I would check. Or, or you can order the one that we have on our Amazon um, page as well. What do you have left on this sheet? We need to get close I, to the intern. That is everything. Okay, who won, who won the cook-off? Well, let, let's oh. make sure we have all our announcements. So you, you, we, we did the, the, the batch cooking announcement. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think that was the only one we were kind of pinning on for today. Um, yeah, who won the Crocs versus uh, Giroudi's cook-off thing that Chef AJ hosted today? I, I do have a vote. Um, well, did they declare it a tie? They declared it a tie. I, I didn't get to watch the whole thing because I was prepping for tonight's um, show. You know, so it's I didn't a usual, here's what came to mind on that. We both cook, we're preparing our meals, and I get all my stuff and I kind of throw it on my plate and it, it's going to taste good. And, and, I, and I say, I'm ready to go. Well, she's still over on the other side of the counter making her plate like picture perfect. Why? Because she's going to take a picture of it and post it somewhere. And so her food tastes good too. <laughs> but hers presents very well. My presentation is nothing, and her presentation of a lot of what she does is fabulous. So there was a dichotomy on screen from what Brian did, from what Brittany did in terms of showing it to the camera. So I think the scale may have leaned towards Brittany. Because hers looked pretty? Yeah. Well, there's something to be said for that, because you know so, they say we eat with our eyes Tiffany's first. Tiffany's yelling that it was a tie with an exclamation point. Okay, but you're nice. So Well, it, well it's hard to declare a winner. And when Judy you, says it was a tie. When nobody gets to taste the food. Oh, and Brian's got a, a fan in Miss Iris saying that Brian won. So I don't know if this will ever be resolved. I don't That's know. That's why, you know, Chef AJ completely threw under the bus and said you did not want to participate, which is true. Tammy does not like to be, uh, even in competitive backyard games, she's, she's happier to watch the grandkids and let us other folks. No, I play with the grandkids. No, you, you, would, you don't want Oh, no, I like to do cornhole. Cornhole. Well, oh, I like that game. Okay. Yeah, but I'm not... Nothing I, rough and tumble or, or um, card games, you know... That. No, I just don't... I don't want to be put on the spot. I don't want to be put on the spot... You know, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So AJ tried to get me to um, say yes to do her Iron Chef thing um, when I was talking to her this morning, and I said, "Yeah, I'm just, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. I, I'm not interested in that. It would cause me too stress." I heard her ask them if they got any sleep last night or were they stressed out and worried. Yeah, she was planning about, about, Yeah, well, that raises and the I tension thought, and the drama. That's good. That's good. I was like, media. well, that's exactly why I don't want to do something like that because I don't want to be stressed out the night before and not be able to sleep and wonder, you know, what are the ingredients and what am I going to yeah. make? And I'm too much of a perfectionist. I told her, you're a trained chef. You can think quick. You can throw things together and have them turn out good. I just don't think that I have that ability. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have created recipes. We have shot the video for them. And then I've told Tom, yeah, dump it. Dump it. And he'll be like, what? And I'll it's be just like, not good enough. We did these crispy oat cookies and I got the video almost done and then you said you know what they're just they don't taste that yeah. terrific don't and the alfredo sauce we made the a whole one. video on the first one and then afterwards i said you know what this isn't my best but work. the difference between that and the second one was, was dramatic huge. right the, the second alfredo sauce is so like see? premium and the he was like you're kidding me we made the video and you want me to trash the video and i was like yeah give me i gotta work on this again and it's perfect it so see that's how i am so i could not do the gina understands she says that she would freeze up on the spot if she was put on the spot like yeah that. see i would too gina i would just totally it would just make me ill to think about that so i i mean i'll do a lot of other things but i'm not doing you know, that okay oh hey i um yeah we're on camera yeah this is this is tammy tammy's camera here tiffany there's those flowers uh, that you were asking for over there by the... I oven. didn't have to buy new ones this week, Tiffany, because the ones that I bought last week are still looking beautiful. So they must have like just gotten them in when I bought them. And then the ones that I bought three weeks ago at Costco are just now starting to die. It's been... The flowers lately have been lasting so long. So maybe it's because it's the cool weather and so they're not you know, getting hot in transit or something. But so so you can have I didn't get new flowers. So you can this have week. Tammy and flowers or you can have Tammy and Tom. But you can't have both. Oh well we could move the flowers over here. They could have sat this, here. this shows over though. We this shows to... over. Okay. Well here here is um, a fun little quote and I don't know um, who made it, but it goes along with today's theme. Where your mind goes, your body will follow. And I love that saying so it's kind of like the if you think you can you can and if you think you can't you can't so it's mind over matter where your mind goes your body will follow 
So I hope you guys all have an amazing yeah. week. Are we done? Are we wrapping yeah, up? Yeah, Mary and Claire agree with you on the the Alfredo sauce that this last one was, she said, they say it's the bomb. It, it's just like you. so delightful. Thank it's, you it's so like, much. So I want to try it in a lasagna and see how that goes. Make a, um, a white lasagna. Hmm. I think it would be really good in lasagna. So okay. in my spare time, I'm going to do that. Do I have any spare time? Uh, that's been asked on here actually in the comments. I forgot who asked it, but somebody's asking, uh, "What do you do with all of your spare time?" Yeah, we have none. We have like we have no spare time. I wake up between four thirty and five o'clock every morning, and that's usually when I do like an Instagram post, answer Facebook questions. Um, that kind of thing. We did our physical therapy this morning while we were talking to Chef AJ. Yeah, so we did double duty this morning. We yeah. both are oh. doing physical therapy right now. So we did our exercises yeah. while we talked to her on the phone. We Then we go for a four, um, we do our four mile walk. Um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we are with our grandkids. So we, you know, prep our lunch and um, we do our grandkids. Yeah, so Sunday is pretty much this show, and Monday, Wednesday, and Friday we're with the kids. So we actually have two days a week to work on not no bug stuff. Speaking of which, and Saturday, who's what? What are we doing next Sunday? Did you announce that? Oh, I didn't. Thank you. So next Sunday we're so excited. So um, our friend uh, Laura Armitage is going to be on. We're interviewing her, and she's just like the most delightful, most positive person you have ever met. Met, and she has an amazing uh, weight loss story, plant-based transformation, and we're just so excited to have her on. And so I was um, texting with her this morning, and so she will be on next week. So super excited about that. And um, that's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. So that's next week. And you're, you're going to want to see that because she's just really inspirational. Okay. That... Definitely a mind over matter kind of gal. Okay. So she's helped me a, a lot. Where, so where do we, Gina wants to know, where so we get the second Alfredo recipe? Is it on the blog? Yeah, the Alfredo recipe is on the blog. It's the only one because the the one that we made the first video for, we, we never, never published. Post, we didn't post it. We yet. never um, published it because I was like, you know, this just isn't it. It's good, but it's a, not there, great. And I've had more than one Alfredo sauce, you know, vegan Alfredo sauce, and Tammy's really is the best one I've ever Thank had. You. So, so if you just look up um, the vegan Alfredo sauce, we have a video and we have a blog post with a printable recipe and it's super easy to make and it's really Alfred. delicious some Alfred. people write to us and tell us that they make it every week because they just love it so <laughs> and it goes on rice or pasta or zucchini noodles or vegetables it's just it's delicious and, and but next i want to try a lasagna with it okay would be great okay i think that's everything yeah moderators thank you for um, taking a lot of questions today. Appreciate all your answers there. Yeah, you guys are amazing. We just, we couldn't do this without you. So thank you so much for helping. Thank you for that wonderful email you sent us earlier in the day. <laughs> that looks amazing as well. Yeah, we're so excited. So, okay. Um, I think we're ready. Oh, somebody says that Ikea has a huge cheap metal bowl. She just got one. So that's okay. good to know if you have an Ikea close to you. They do have very um, economically priced a kitchenware. So. Yeah, and somebody else up on the scroll in the chat said that they scored one at, I think, Amazon for like $21, a big one. Oh, nice. So, That's great. So, so, so you the, need the, and to... And the link of ours has all different sizes, but I just... Yes. My link goes to the 16 quart because that's... That's the closest one I can find to yeah. the one we you have. Yeah, you want a really big one for um, mixing up the batch prepped salad. So if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to Nutmeg Notebook, uh, the blog yet to get on our email list, go over to nutmegnotebook.com and get on our mailing list. We don't, we never sell our mailing list to anyone and um, only Tom sends emails to you. So make sure you do that and we will let you know on Friday all about the truth about weight loss. And sign up if you want to take the batch cooking boot camp. If you can't watch in real time for that, you will get the replay. You you will be oh. able to watch it as many times as you want. On your boot camp, the one that we just published, and, and I, I did I put the link, I did put the link in there. Yeah. 
um, there's an automatic ten dollars off. That the one with Tammy and Chef AJ on the batch uh -huh. cooking is forty nine dollars. But when you use our link, it's an automatic ten dollars off. If you look at the link, it says right at the very end, save ten. It plugs in for you, so you'll see a thirty nine dollar price come up. That's already discounted. The uh, discount's yes. been applied. If you go and buy outside of Nutmeg Notebook, it's forty nine dollars. So you want to use the link, not not just going straight to the site because then you won't get the 10 bucks. Oh, if you just go to Eventbrite directly and it's look it up, now. it's $49. Yeah, because right. Justin's early bird thing was only for the first two days. Uh -huh. And then it's only through either our link or Chef AJ's link that you get that. Okay, So, Good so to But know. if you're on this show, you know, feel free to use our link. <laughs> So, okay. Please do, please do. Okay. So, so this was really fun, wasn't it? Yeah, so you're... Uh, you're I'm Tammy. You're Tammy. And, you're and I'm Tom. <laughs> Are you sure? You kind of hesitated there a little bit. No. <laughs> okay. And no, we... I'm, I'm definitely Tom. <laughs> okay. And, well, AJ likes to call us Tommy and Tam instead no. of Tom and Tammy. She likes to call us Tommy, Tommy and Tam. No. Yeah, she does. You're not saying that right. Uh, well, how, how does she uh, say it? No, is it Tommy and Tam? Okay. Or, or Tam and Tommy, I think is what she says. Tam and Tommy. Tam and Tommy, that's what she says. Instead starting. of Tom and Tammy. She's trying to torment us. Okay. <laughs> she does Good torment night. us. Good night, moderators. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Um, I'm Tammy. I'm Tom. And we help you. Get healthy. And stay healthy. One, one meal. meal at a time. Bye-bye. <laughs> it's a lot of fun Okay, tonight. now i got to push the button. He's got to push the button. Okay. You want to push the button? Right here. All right. Bye, you guys.